May Hi, I'm doing this live and um, hopefully this will mean that it stays recorded. It just means that I can't edit. So I'm going to be using my cue cards as I talk a little bit about formants and resonance. So the two really go together. Um, I'm going to share with you some of my resources that I've been using. Um, I have been using Richard Miller's book, Structure of Singing. I have been using a bit of Fundamentals of Great Vocal Technique, the teachings of Michael Trimble, um, a little bit from What Every Singer Needs to Know About the Body, great resource for uh, singing teachers. Um, another great resource for singing teachers, which uh, gets very technical, is Your Voice and Inside View. And um, I may pull up some images from this book just to show you a little bit about formants. So a formant, according to Your Voice and Inside View by Scott McCoy, um, a formant is a resonance of the vocal tract. So all that really means is that the vocal folds produce sound and then the formants are created within the resonance tract or the body of the instrument um, which is all the spaces and cavities inside your mouth and throat. Um, and when the vocal folds produce tone, they produce one uniform tone, and then that's filtered through your resonating tract, um, and it creates these overtones or harmonics that create your own unique timbre and your resonance for singing as well as speaking. So to understand the source filter theory, it's not a perfect analysis, but... Um, you can kind of think of a kaleidoscope and a kaleidoscope has the mirrors all around the edge and light goes through it and is filtered through all those mirrors to create a really beautiful image for you on the other end. That's kind of like our air goes through our vocal folds and then it's filtered through all of this blah stuff, um, your vowels and your consonants and your soft palate being lifted and your jaw being dropped and things like that. And it creates your beautiful sound, that beautiful kaleidoscope of sound, um, which creates our spectral envelope, um, literally a whole envelope, a whole pocket full of all these beautiful sounds put together to make one sound. Um, a resonator is the body of an instrument. So on a guitar, it's, you know, the actual body of it and it has the hole in it and it has all that space inside for sound waves to bounce off of and come back to you. Um, that's why if you pluck the string of an electric guitar, it doesn't make very much sound because it doesn't have a resonating body to reflect that sound. So if you want an experiment, um, the book, What Every Singer Needs to Know About the Body has a really fun experiment with uh, a glass and rubber band. And let's see if I have a rubber band here. Um, I do have something like a glass. My desk is a mess, don't judge me. So here's a rubber band. And I really hope my audio is on. Okay, it looks like it's on. So, you can hear that like slapping from my rubber band, my microphone's over here. And I can take this candle holder. It's got a nice resonating body and stretch my rubber band over that. And then you get this nice deep resonance and it changes the sound. That's essentially what our vocal tract is doing. And when you change vowels while you're singing, it changes what type of resonance you get, what type of sound you're producing. So an ooh is going to be very dark, where an e is going to be very bright because the shape of our resonators are changing. Hmm, I have more cue cards. Okay. So we want to change those. We change the shape of our vowel. So it's kind of like a funhouse mirror when you stand in front of a bendy funhouse mirror. We see the light waves reflect back in different shapes. When you change the shape of your vowel, we hear the sounds differently. So the reason or one of the meters to measure how the vowels are produced is through formants. So here's where Scott McCoy's book is really great with the graphics. Um, 
we have these graphics about frequency. And so your formant is like peak frequencies that occur during vowel singing. So you'll see these peaks in the harmonic series. Those are the five formants. So formants one and two are the ones that our ears will hear as vowels. And beyond that is what we call the singer's formant. And the singer's formant is kind of like, you know, when the Power Rangers all morph into Megatron and all their powers come together and it goes pew, and then he turns into this big giant robot. They turn into a big giant robot. That's kind of like how the singer's formant works, is that all these harmonics start coming together and building on each other to make this pew sound that shoots out into the audience so that you can hear uh, an opera singer over a big orchestra or like Adina Menzel singing um, Defying Gravity is using that belting formant. That's kind of like what tenors sing with when they're um, up in the stratosphere. Um, so that's essentially your singer's formant. Now, you can measure these on a computer. You can use Voce Vista and you can understand exactly where these peaks occur and all of that. But really what you want to do is you want to feel for them. You want to understand what your best vowels are. You want to understand what uh, your best sounds are. And when that singer's formant locks in or when that resonance really locks in, you can feel it. And you want to really lean into that feeling when you need to get your voice to carry. Um, so when we change our vowels, we change our resonance. So um, that's basically all that formants are. It's a rather complicated way of talking about what singers have been doing for hundreds of years. When they study with the teacher, that teacher can kind of evaluate whether the singer is really accessing their resonance in the right way, whether they have the breath support to support the resonance. So if you don't have your breath behind your resonator, then things can sometimes get strained or pushed. Um, so you want to do that. So in looking through what every singer needs to know about the body, they kind of simplify it down to the laryngeal opening needs to be smaller than the pharyngeal opening. So that means that the space where we're creating sound needs to be smaller than the resonating body. Um, and we can do that by shifting vowels. So if you're wanting to access more resonance, you find your best vowels and you can kind of work towards using mixed vowels. So that would be essentially formant tuning is mixing your vowels so that the voice projects better or so that it rings better. You wanna have, some people refer to it as brightness or ping. Um, traditionally, it's kind of the chiaro scuro in bel canto technique um, where you hear a brightness even though there's lots of loft and backness in the sound, and you have that soft palate lifted. And that soft palate, that's gonna create more resonating space, um, and, uh, and that's all it is. So here's some of my graphics I can show you, my little cartoons here. Here's your spectral envelope, right? That's when all the sounds kind of line up. That's all these vowels. Each one has its own spectral envelope. Um, the lips and the mouth can kind of form the, the shapes that we need to tune that resonance or to make that resonance really work. That's why like when a choir isn't matching vowels, they sound out of tune. Everyone could be singing the same pitch, but if everyone's on a different vowel, the harmonics aren't lining up. So, you know, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, that exercise really comes back in this one. Um, don't take my graphics too seriously. This is my brainstorming. But if you were looking at sound waves, you kind of have your fundamental frequency rate wave. And then you have all these other harmonics stacked on it. And some of those harmonics along that spectrum, they will be more prominent than others. So if you really want to get into acoustics and, and you really want to in-depth study how formants work, I would recommend Scott McCoy's book. It talks a lot about how you in analyze this on a computer, how you use Voce Vista to understand that. If you just uh, want to understand how your resonators work and how to sing better, I would um, maybe take a look at this one. I, I think the Michael Trimble is actually a great resource for that though. So Michael Trimble's book on uh, vocal technique was ed edited by Christopher Arneson and Richard DiRenzi. Um, has a lot of great resources on the traditional bel canto technique and um, 
lots of great, great students in that lineage, got lots of great, great teachers in Michael Trimble's lineage, um, pedagogical lineage at least. Um, and if you are a voice teacher wanting to get really serious about understanding everything from formants and bel canto to breath support, Richard Miller's books are all extremely detailed. His legacy has really been the um, passing on of vocal technique um, strategies and um, great teachers came out of his studio and continue to teach. So uh, do look into these resources a little more in depth, but I hope that gives you kind of an overview of what formants are. Um, don't get too hung up on formants. If you are taking a pedagogy class and you have to pass this for a test, um, read a few different resources. Don't just look at one book, look at a few different explanations because each of these books explain formants a little bit differently. So find the one that works for you and good luck. And if you are a singer um, learning or professional, I, I hope this helps clarify this so that you can explain it. Um, I found that I had some hesitations talking about it in fear of being wrong, but after going through my resources, I find that there's no one way to explain it, um, but you just sing and you find it and you figure it out and you know what works for you and you just keep singing and trying until everything locks in and feels great. And when it feels great, it's probably working great. So have a great day, everyone. Bye.